Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so glad you joined us today. It's going to be an exciting program. Brian, it's great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? You know, it is great to see you, my friend. And, uh, you know, I'm doing great. It just seems like this this lockdown has just extended, Lori. And, you know, I, I feel like people are getting a little bit antsy because the weather's it's beautiful outside, and uh, it just seems like <laughs> how much more can we take inside of this? But I believe also this is where faith needs to come in like never before, where we have to believe God, and uh, we have to trust that even with this, this too shall pass. Well, I took to, we're going to talk about taking a leap of faith today in the program. We got exciting stories coming up that are going to expire, inspire you. But I took a little leap of faith yesterday, Brian, with my grand, my little granddaughter. We put the sprinkler on and I was jumping through the sprinkler and hoping I wasn't going to wipe out. <laughs> anyway, she was just giggling and laughing. She thought it was the greatest thing. So we had a good old time leaping of faith in the sprinkler. <laughs> what about you? Well, you know, not quite as uh, acrobatic as yourself, but you know, my leap of faith, I mean, this year I've been spending a lot of time, especially on a little bit of self-care. Because usually I'd be flying around in different places and, and going into locations and preparing to uh, speak at conferences. But all of that has been really uh, put a halt to. Uh, but what I've seen is as I've been spending more time at home, I'm loving the time that I'm spending with my family, but also uh, on the Zoom calls with uh, uh, congregation and, and people across the country, because I believe that this is a great time of innovation. It's a great time to take a leap of faith. I think for many people, um, when sometimes, you know, we're in the pressure pot, it actually encourages creativity and maybe thinking outside your the box that you're used to and out of your comfort zone. And today's program, I was really inspired, Brian, by some of the stories we're going to see of people that, you know, they really had to trust God in an unknown time. And that's what it means to take a leap of faith. So take a look. You're going to love it. The Minnesota Twins' Brian Dozier is one of baseball's rising stars. In this, his second full Major League season, he's among the game's statistical leaders, making a name for himself at the top of the Twins' lineup. Someone says you want to be the leadoff for a Major League team, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. It's a lot of pressure, and, uh, but I enjoy it. Uh, my job's to get on base, being the guy to kind of set the tone. He's the spark plug that ignites the Twins' offense and a highlight reel for their infield defense. But for Brian, Flash comes second to fundamentals. People tell me all the time, old school, um, and, and I love that. I was drafted by the Minnesota Twins, and it's just such a blessing because the Twins really focus on all uh, through their farm system, even to the big leagues. The Twins do things the right way. Fundamentals extend to Brian's beliefs. For all the notoriety he receives about his baseball achievements, he receives as much for his outspoken opinions about faith. On my bio for Twitter, it says uh, I'm a Christian playing baseball for the Minnesota Twins on the side. And I do have an amazing job that it's a dream come true for me to do. But at the same time, that's not what I am. That's not who I am. My real job is to be a Christian, be the guy that God wants me to be. That's my, that's my main focus. And I pray every day before I play to see Christ living in me today. What is it about the fundamentals of your Christianity that, that you go back to? Glorifying Him and, and knowing why I'm here on this earth to remain focused on what's really important in life is the fundamentals. The biggest picture is glorifying uh, my Father in Heaven, so even through times of struggle. Seeing the bigger picture helped him endure a career freefall. He was the Twins' 2011 Minor League Player of the Year, but six months later, Brian struggled in his first major league stint at shortstop, the position he played since grade school. He was demoted, finishing the 2012 season in the minors. You know, it seemed like it was just like a roller coaster, up and down, offensively, defensively. You hear that saying all the time, it's tough to get to the major leagues, but harder to stay. It's absolutely true. As if the adjustments of a player's major league arrival wasn't enough, Brian's came with a request to switch positions to fill a team's need. Not only did he accommodate, but he delivered, setting franchise records for most home runs hit and fewest errors allowed by a second baseman. In order to, to have a job in the big leagues, they said they want me to be the second baseman. So I really took it upon myself to, to learn every single thing. I proved that I can be the best 
second baseman I could possibly be. So once I got the sense of being comfortable more than anything, it kind of it kind of evolved from there. 2013 became his breakout season. Brian led the Twins in home runs, RBIs, and runs scored. Defensively, he became the anchor of the infield. He had to relearn footwork as a second baseman and master new angles to turn the timely choreographed double play. I did hundreds and hundreds at spring training just to try to get it down, the pivot. At shortstop, everything was in front of me, whereas at second base, the runner's sliding into me, just ready to bury me in the ground, you know, take my legs out and stuff, and I can't see the guy, so I don't know where he's at. It is a correlation in your Christian life. And in the world today, you never know what's coming, but if you have your roots, you're the Christian that God wants you to be, everything's fundamentally sound in your life as it is in baseball with that pivot. It makes it easier for, for those that have that relationship with the Lord. Adversity comes with the territory specifically with baseball's performance-based pressure. You can't let that affect uh, anything you're doing because at the end of the day, 0 for 5, a couple of errors, whatever it is, that's not the reason I was put on this earth that day. The cameras are on your stuff. You want to throw everything. You want to say stuff. And, but my job is to let others see Christ living in me. It's a strong conviction that Brian and his wife Renee demonstrated on a missions trip to Nicaragua where they help provide clean water for a small community of local residents. Best experience of my life. It was life-changing, and it just puts so much, so many things in perspective. The, the struggles people have around the world, but yet can be the happiest people you've ever met in your life. We help dig trenches for a clean water system and stuff, and uh, to pray with these people, and uh, their relationship with God is, is amazing. Yeah, the fact that they're drinking muddy water. They live off a dollar, less than a dollar a day, but yeah, they're some of the strongest Christians you can even meet. Brian Dozier, playmaking second baseman, whose unique mission goes beyond a major league uniform. To live my life for him and not anybody else, and to go day to day uh, trying to serve him. My main focus is to reach out to others, to go out and make disciples. That's what God wants us to do. God calls us to be fishers of men, and that's what I feel like my calling is. Brian Dozier, I have uh, much respect for him. You know, when he uh, said, this is what my calling is, did you hear that? My main focus is to reach out to others and go and make disciples. That's what God wants us to do, and God calls us to be fishers of men, and that's what I feel like my calling is. You know, when I wrote that down, I was thinking, well, that's what all of our calling is, and uh, he's living it, and he's living it large. Major League Baseball is not an easy place. I know professional athletics uh, in and of themselves are very challenging. And um, to be able to be a shortstop and transition to go to second base and not see people coming, did you hear that? That wasn't a small thing. That was huge because it takes such a, a harmony and such a, uh, a trust to get that double play and be able to respond. But that's how the Christian life is as well. And uh, I believe there are so many things that um, out of his testimony we can take away. Uh, the number one thing, though, is faith. Uh, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. For we must believe that God is and he's a rewarder of those that come to him by faith. You know, the early disciples, when they... Uh, observed and, and spent time around Jesus, what they recognized that he had, that they needed. And it says this in, in Luke chapter 17 and verse five, it says, and the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. I don't know what you need faith for today, but I want to get this into your hands. It doesn't cost you anything. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Just request it. But today, think bold and move bold, but stand on your faith. We'll be right back.
if God puts something on your heart, you can't run from it. <laughs> or you can try, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out well. So Paula Ferris took a leap of faith. In 2018, she stepped down from her successful run as co-host on The View and left the anchor desk of Good Morning America Weekend to pursue what she calls a passion project with the ABC Network, a podcast called Journeys of Faith with Paula Ferris. I really wanted to give listeners an opportunity to hear from newsmakers and um, from influencers, what does their faith journey look like? What gets them through their chapters of triumph and their chapters of tragedy? What holds them together? Paula says her relationship with God keeps her grounded at work in an additional role as ABC senior national correspondent and at home as a wife and mother. During a rough patch early on in her marriage, she relied on faith to keep her family together. We've been married 18 years now, thank God. Um, but it's been a lot of work and we were just talking about it recently. You know, thank God we didn't abandon our relationship, even though at that moment it didn't feel like there was much worth fighting for. When it came to our marriage, we stuck it out. And I can really only say it's because of God. You know, it's at that moment, neither of us really, even though I had moved out, neither of us had a real peace about it. And so we stuck it out. We have three beautiful kids and we're doing so well now. She says making a distinction between her identity and career was a breakthrough to a more stress-free, fulfilled life. That was the main reason why I stepped away from anchoring GMA weekends and from The View. I didn't feel like I really had much of a work-life balance. It was hard to step away from those two jobs that I didn't realize had I defined me so much. And I just have to remember to give myself as much grace as I give other people and that it's not about being perfect. It's about a journey and to love myself and to love others through it. And, you know, it, it helps too that, you know, I've surrounded myself, my friends really couldn't care less what I do for a living. During her podcasts, she's hoping to empower and encourage listeners through conversations with guests from varying faith backgrounds, including celebrities and influencers like Luke Bryan, Sherry Shepard, and Reza Aslan, to name a few. I've had a guest on that was an atheist and another that was Muslim, which I learned a ton about about Islam, and I think some of the more profound conversations that we have as Christians are with people that we don't necessarily see eye to eye with. And it's important in this moment to sit down and listen to people and respect people, no matter where they're coming from, and show them love. So who would she love to invite for a future episode? I'd love to get Snoop Dogg on, I'm just telling you. He released a gospel album about a year ago He's had this sudden resurgence or rediscovery or conversion to Christianity. And I feel like people don't give him a chance. I would love to have him on the podcast and give him an opportunity to talk about it. Paula has high expectations for the next season of Journeys of Faith. And you know, the first season, it's you try to figure out what works and what doesn't. You try to see how people are gonna receive it. And people, you know, were very receptive to it. And I'm super excited and I know, once again, you know, there's that fear, oh my gosh, are people gonna listen? But I know, once again, if God calls you to do something, he'll equip you. Paula Ferris, sharing her own journey of faith as a reflection of God's love. I'm nothing without my relationship with Jesus. And that's the thing, it's not a religion, it's, it's a relationship. And, you know, I just try to ask myself, how would Jesus handle this situation? You know, do people see Jesus in me? That's the thing too. And sometimes I feel like I might be the only Jesus that you might see today and this might be my only crack. So it's just, for me, it's a constant reminder of the magnitude of the responsibility that we have as Christians to love God, love people, and show them the love of Jesus. Boy, Paula has accomplished a lot of things in her life, but there is a huge lesson in there. She really took a leap of faith, and the reason that she could take that leap of faith is because she discovered the difference between what you do and who you are. It really comes down to identity. Jobs come and go, opportunities come and go. If you put your identity in all that you do, you could get very discouraged, you could be very disillusioned, and when a season comes to an end or a job comes to an end, or you never want it to come to an end, that means that you're holding on to what you do or what you accomplished. But our identity isn't rooted in what we do. It's, it's rooted in who God says we are. In fact, it's so important in scripture that you understand 
Your self-worth, your identity is found in what the Lord says about you. And also when he calls you to something, he equips you for it. Paula reminds us of that. She he said she said to think boldly and move boldly because God's not going to call you into something that he's not going to equip you for. And that's why we can move in such a uh, leap of faith way. If you want this resource, give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. Or maybe you just need prayer with someone. You just need someone to encourage you to take that next step. Maybe you don't know what that next step is. Can I just remind you about what scripture says about you? That you are rooted in who God says you are. He calls you by name. There's a wonderful story, a story of Jacob, and God was calling Jacob to step out and trust him. And this is what God said to Jacob in um, Isaiah 43, verse 1. This is from the New Living Translation. But now the Lord who made you, O Jacob, and he who made you, O Israel, says, do not be afraid, for I have bought you and made you free. I have called you by name. You are mine. Did you hear that? God is saying to you, you are mine. Trust me. Step out. I'll give you everything you need for the journey. It'll be worth it. Take a leap of faith. Give us a call today. I don't know if there has ever been a time when our nation and the world needed a miracle more than we do right now. Get Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Do You Need a Miracle? In this DVD, you'll discover God's awesome power at work today, featuring incredible true stories of divine intervention. God showed up and he worked miracles. Different doctors would come in, it's like, wow, you're a miracle. I knew God had restored him. We've also gathered teachings that will be especially helpful to you with what we're facing today. Why it's so important to believe God and build our faith. And this program is going to help you do just that. Conquer fear, find hope, and be encouraged. Get Do You Need a Miracle? Available now. Well, it's that time again for Ask Anything. Brian, I've got a question from uh, one of our viewers. Here it says, we make mistakes every single day. We can agree with that, right, Brian? <laughs> but how do we know that God forgives us every time we ask? Oh, my. That's a great question. But it's also very timely as well. Because, you know, in this self-quarantine, I'm sure we make even more mistakes than we'd like to, uh, to admit. But the reason why we know that, uh, that God forgives us is because he tells us so. You know, it says something, uh, and, it's, and it's powerful when you look at God would rather uh, be on talking terms with us than to be mad at us. So he gave us a, a, a tool to have that relationship. He says this in 1 John chapter 1, 8, 9. He says, uh, and, and this is so important, make sure that you write this down. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, watch this, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and also to cl cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's not really a sin issue we have, but it's a, a righteousness issue. So we have to be in right standing with God. And when we're in right standing, we can, we can believe that all things will work together for our good, Lori. Mm. All That's right. good, Brian. So good. We have a faithful God who forgives us. I love it. Amen. And we've got a, a question for you, Ms. Hartshorn. And this is from one of our faithful viewers. And uh, what happens if you make a vow to God and later break that vow? Well, that's a good question, too. And certainly you see in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, people making vows all the time, you know. And so I think it's always good when we ask a question to look at what would Jesus say? So I'm going to take you to Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, verses 33 to 37. Here's what Jesus said. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool. And in verse 37, all you need to say is simply yes or no. 
Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Jesus gets straight to the point, doesn't he, Brian, on this to say, really let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't get involved in making vows. And I think because Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves, we're likely to break a vow. And then we're a liar when we say we're going to do something and we don't do it. But here's the wonderful truth. Maybe you've made a vow. Maybe it's a marriage vow to God and, it, and you broke it. Just like Brian reminded us, call it sin and God will forgive all sin, even the sin of breaking a vow. But we must confess it as sin and then receive God's forgiveness and then move forward and be careful not to make vows. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Hopefully that's helpful for you today. Absolutely. Wonderful response. Hey, and we'll be right back. Hey, how's it going? My name's Robin Waller. I'm the lead pastor at Live Church, a church on a mission to see churches thriving on our college and university campuses in Canada. You know, a number of years ago, roughly 12 years ago, I was driving down uh, downtown Hamilton and uh, we were on a bit of a mission that night as a church. As we were driving downtown, it, it was one of those cold, kind of early fall nights. It was uh, almost like a depressing evening, if you will. And uh, we're driving through the city and we see these boarded up shops and kind of all the markers uh, that classically identify poverty. Uh, I would slowly learn uh, as, we, as we would continue to drive that, that Hamilton was a pretty challenging place at that time. Uh, it was full of poverty, it was full of depression, there was a lot of mental health issues. Uh, I was shocked to learn that 50% of the newcomers in the neighborhood that we were driving through lived in poverty uh, in addition to many children and it was unbelievable. It was almost overwhelming. But as we drove through that city, it wasn't the depression or the poverty that was marked to us. You see, when, when I open my Bible, Jesus has this incredibly beautiful phrase. He says in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So as we were driving through the city, we were convicted, we were convinced that, that if, we were to, if we were to be the church, if we were to embrace this call to be light, that we could see that darkness eradicated. When light encounters darkness, it pushes the darkness out. It, it, it ceases to exist. And that's the call that Jesus has on me, it's the call Jesus has on our church, and it's the call Jesus has on you, to be light, to be someone who enters into the world, and as you engage with it, as you love it, you push the darkness out, and in turn, people respond by giving glory to their Father in heaven. You know, this invitation to be light is the call that each of us has. Every single person who is a Jesus follower has this invitation to embrace this identity marker of being light. Somebody that shines in the world through our actions, through our good works. Maybe that means serving your city. Maybe that means loving your neighbor. Maybe that means engaging with the things your church is doing. It means different things for every person, but the call is for all of us, for each one of us to step into that responsibility, that identity of being a city on a hill that is letting our light shine so that people will respond in an act of worship. What do I enjoy most about what I do? Well, that's easy. I love connecting with people, especially when someone says, I am so glad I can talk with you. I really need prayer. That's God's perfect timing. I talk with people all the time who want prayer for a family situation. Sometimes it's prayer for an emotional or physical need 
or even a financial breakthrough. It's so amazing that I can share about God's love and encourage people. I love this Bible verse, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is at work. I've seen him answer prayer. Won't you call today? 1-855-759-0700. God bless you. Well, Brian, I love today's show, and I was reminded myself how important and exciting it is to take a leap of faith. This is how God wants us to live our lives, don't you think? Oh, absolutely, Lori. And uh, when you see that leap of faith, it seems scary when we first take off, but when we know that God's there to catch us, oh, my goodness. You know, you want to take a leap after a leap after a leap. And, uh, and that's where we begin to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I really appreciated uh, Robin Waller's teaching about being light as well, because we really need to be light, especially now. I agree, Brian. I think that's one way we take a leap of faith right now is we every day is a bit unknown for us. And so stepping into the unknown and trusting God one day at a time can be your leap of faith. Um, you know, we have a gift for you. I don't know whether you've taken the leap of faith yet to become a 700 Club Canada partner, but that would be a great leap of faith for you to do today. It's only $20 a month or, or a greater gift if you're able. And we have a thank you gift for you called Do You Need a Miracle? We'll send you that teaching. But would you take a leap of faith with us today and give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. We'd so appreciate doing this with you. Absolutely. And it would be such an encouragement if you do that now. You know, Lori, when I look at uh, what God is doing and, and Brian Dozier, and I'm seeing how God is moving through people, I believe this is a time more than ever before where we do have to take that leap of faith. And we want to leave you with a power verse as well. Uh, it's a, it's a, a wonderful gift to us, the Word of God, because it says in Psalm 73, in verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but... God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. What a great word for us. Strength of my heart and my portion. That means he'll give us everything we need, right, Brian? Absolutely. And we believe that and we're believing that for you. We love you and we look forward to seeing you again next time. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.